Hello everyone, welcome back here again to the CarolinaPreps.com TV. I am Chris Hughes, as again joined by my partner, Jason Hunter. Jay, again, we've already went through the intro, but again, Happy New Year. Welcome back. Glad to be back talking high school football. We're going to break down these Carolina Preps Dynamic Fitness and Strength Top 25 Power Rankings. Uh, we're going to start from the bottom, uh, and we're going to start with the bubble teams. And the reason I like to talk about the bubble teams is, one, you want to talk about as many high schools as we can. You know, we're here to promote communities, but football is just a tight, tight business, and I think the margin, you know, I think we have a true elite top 10, but I think anywhere from 10th, 11th, 12th, on down to 40, it's tight because you got so many good teams. Well, and some of these teams that maybe aren't ranked right now are talented teams. Absolutely. And it just goes to show you the depth in the state. And really one thing, just from the player and coach's perspective, is you know they talk about who they have coming back. Yes. But you know many times there's underclassmen that are maybe on the JV team sure. or guys that have really developed that step in to starring roles. And you know, it's maybe some unexpected surprises on some of these teams with certain players that's going to catapult them to the next level. And, and doing power rankings for a preseason, I have to admit, and I've been working on these since like late December, early January. So I've been breaking down teams all winter, all spring, all summer long. But again, it's an inexact science, especially with preseason rankings because you're dealing with just the unknown. Right. I mean, sure, you know the returning starters, coaches, changes. You know who's going to be good for the most part. But you just never know what a team's doing behind the scenes, busting their tails when no one's looking. And, and, and let's, let's face it, we're talking about 14, 15, 16, 17-year-old men from ninth grade on up. And, and kids grow. They change. They get stronger. They work out in the weight room. So, you know, football football's never a standalone target. It's never static. It's always moving. Yeah, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You never stay the same. So, uh, you know, a lot of these teams have talent, but it's really going to depend on upon how they develop throughout yep. the season. So let's talk about some bubble teams. Again, uh, these are really good football teams. Some of them probably deserve to be in the in the rankings. Uh, in fact, I looked down here, uh, we got a 12 and one team. And we'll start off Lake Norman High School, 12 and one. Uh, we got a 12 and one team last year, not making it into the ranking, that's absurd. But again, Lake Norman, uh, good program. Olympic, a new coach, Jason Fowler, five and seven last year, new program, Olympic. Mooresville, an eight and four team. Reagan, you seen Reagan. Reagan yeah. nearly knocked off West Forsyth, who we know was good last year. That's a game that we covered on TV. Yeah, and they were three and eight last season, but they have outstanding skill athletes and a team that's really developing and getting better throughout last season and looking to have a big impact this year. Another yeah. team, New Bern, with the history yeah. they have down there down east, absolutely the success. They're looking to have a big season. And, and you just took it right out from under me, New Bern. And and here's the thing about New Bern. Last year, they had an interim coach. Bobby Curlings, you know, he had he had to sit out. He had some health concerns. Bobby Curlings is back. He told me flat out at the clinic yesterday, we're going to be better. So I guarantee you, New Bern's a team. You know, they were in a state championship game not too long ago. So they're, they're one of the bubble teams for sure. Uh, Kernersville, uh, here at Glenn High School, Kernersville. Stephon Brown, he's going to Appalachian. He's one of the best quarterbacks that I've seen. He was at the Shrine Bowl Elite Combat, uh, the Combine, where they brought back the Elite 100 players. He throws one of the prettiest balls that I've seen. Great downfield passer. Uh, they're going to be really good. They went 8-4 and four last year. And, again, these, this is probably a team that deserved to be in the top 25. But, you know, they had a change at offensive coordinator. They graduated most of his receiving core from last year. So that might be one of the reasons they're not back. But, you know, just a good team. Um, and, and Pine Forest, a team out of Fayetteville, bubble team. Uh, Northwest Guilford, Providence. Providence was three and eight, uh, but again, Charlotte. And, and let's talk about Charlotte football. Three and eight in Charlotte last year, uh, but I think that goes to show you got a quality team, but just the level of competition right. in Charlotte is crazy. Well, three and eight in Charlotte could be eight and three in another part of the no state question. because of the competition level. And we've seen so many of these teams and just really amazed at the talent they have. And but there's so many good teams down there. It really builds you up and it makes you battle tested by the time you get to the playoffs. No question. A uh, couple other bubble teams just like to talk about. Porter Ridge, uh, I really like uh, what they've got going on there. You mentioned New Bern, South Mecklenburg, 6-6. Six and six. Raleigh Millbrook, we've seen Millbrook a lot in the last few years. They've made some great playoff runs. Cl Coach Clarence and score, they were 7-5. and five. They're right on that cusp of being in there. They graduated a great running back in Larry Roundtree, Jr. We remember him. I know we talked a lot about him last year. Had a great shrine ball in Greenhook. Uh, Coach David Green let, went from Menlo, now at uh, Greenhook. Uh, but, again, one of those Raleigh teams, I know you're very familiar with them. 
Uh, he's on the outside looking in. But what jumps out at you, maybe some of the bubble teams, or some of those teams that we looked at, uh, I, I, know, I know you see a lot of football, but I, I think we can't overstate the fact that these are just really good teams. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for me is the late Norman at 12-1. and one. I think they're going to have a chance to have a successful season and to build off last season, and also New Bern, too, with the, the changes there. Coach Curling's coming back, and he told you they're going to be better. So whenever a head coach says they're going to be better, I, I think they have a chance to have a successful season and kind of pick off where they left off a couple of years ago. Yes. All right, so let's dive into it. The 2017 CarolinaPreps.com Dynamic Fitness and Strength uh, Top 25 Power Rankings. And, again, this is no poll. Uh, I had no computer rankings, no poll, no voters. It is it's straight up me. So I'm the one who, who picks these. So if you want to send the hate mail, we know who to send it to. Uh, the Twitter address is right there below the screen. So you know who to send it to. Uh, but 25, Hickory Ridge. They moved down from the – or move up from the 3A to the 4A. They were in the South Piedmont 3A, one of the toughest 3A conferences. We've seen some of the teams they played, A.O. Brown. Or not A.L. Brown, J.M. Robinson last year, uh, Concord, West Rowan. You know, they're used to fierce competition. Coach Jason Seidel last year in his first year went 12-3, and three, went to the fourth round of the playoffs, coming in at 25th. Any thoughts on this program? Well, when you make it that deep in the playoffs, you have that success, but you don't make it all the way. It always makes the offseason one of those situations where you're like, I want to I get to the next level. It makes you work harder and, and really try to finish and get to that final step. So I think they're a team that has a lot of motivation yes. coming into this uh, they, They've got a bona fide D1 receiver coming back. Uh, and we talked some about some of the receivers last year. I, you know, we, we covered them and incredible playoff run. And, and Jason Seidel likes to spread that ball around. They're going to throw the ball. They're going to be really excited. So that's going to be a team to look out for. But they've got an uphill climb. They're in the traditional power Southwestern 4A conference. And you're talking about the likes of Butler, Myers Park, yeah. Independence, East Mecklenburg. I mean, that, that's not going to be an easy run. Well, it's a challenge, but to be the best, you got to beat the best. Yes. And I think that's something, as a player coach, you want to face the toughest competition. Yes. Uh, coming in at 24th, Davie County. They were 12-2 and two last year. Saw them get beat in the third round, fourth round of the playoffs. Uh, again, third round of the playoffs against Greensboro Dudley at home. That was a barn burner of a game. I was there, saw that one myself. Uh, Coach Tim Deverett, who we remember, took over halfway through the season. Uh, Coach DeVore Holman, he, you know, he, he left. He's now the new head coach of West Caldwell. Uh, but Davie County had one of the most exciting quarterbacks I've ever seen in Chris Reynolds. He is now gone, but they do have one of the best receivers in North Carolina in Cooper Wall. This was an exciting team. They were a young team. They bring back most of their offensive line, uh, a lot of their defense. Uh, they had a freshman running back last year. I think this is a team to be dealt with. Well, you said it, offensive line, defense, and that's what they're going to rely on early in the season especially. Yep. But with Wall being the star wide receiver, you know, besides going down the field, you can find different ways to get him involved in the game, whether it's jet sweeps or yes. short passes. Yes. So they want to get the ball in his hands, but it's always a good foundation when you have a great uh, offensive line. They compete in the Central Piedmont 4A. That's no easy task either. Uh, brought in East Forsyth. We'll talk about them later. Obviously, West Forsyth. Mount, well, Mount Tabor's gone. Reagan, Kernersville, Glenn coming in. That's a tough conference. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about them. And we're going to break down conferences more as the season gets closer. East Mecklenburg, they were a team that was 5-7 and seven last year. Coach Barry Schuford, again, in that very, very tough Southwestern 4A conference. Uh, you know, this is almost what I call one of those bring your lunch pill to work kind of teams. They just come home and grind it hard. And those Barry Schuford, you know, he is pretty much the he built that Butler program. He, he built it to what it is today. Barry Schubert's one of the best coaches there is, and this is just a team that just kind of kicks your butt right in the face and, and, and just plays my kind of football. Yeah, I feel like I'm already sore and beat up from them already, but they're a team that's physical, and I think that's the biggest takeaway from them is they want to pound the ball, be physical on the offensive and defensive line, and, and really hope they can wear out the opposing team in the fourth yep. quarter. Uh, moving up to 22nd, Garner. Talk about another physical team. 12-2 last year. Garner's been running the exact same offense. There's been no transition with Garner since Hal Stewart was there in the in the 80s. Uh, they, they've just been hitting you hard. I mean, you don't talk about trap, veer, outside sweep. You know, that's what they do, power. They, they love to run the, run the ball. Uh, again, Thurman Leach is running uh, over there, Garner. Uh, they got one of the better quarterbacks I've seen. He's got some, some good-looking offers. Uh, and we'll talk about players again. This is just a ranking, so we're just talking about teams and not really breaking down the players today. But Garner is, again, one of those teams that it, the, the names change, the faces change, the kids change. 
but the results pretty much stay the same. Well, we talk about stability. They're a team that has had the same system in place for many years now. They want to run the football, and they're always very athletic. But you know what you're going to get with them, but they're always keep things simple and do what they do and do it at a better level than yep. the opposing team. Yep. Uh, come in at number 21, a team that is literally about a mile, like right down the street from Garner, Southeast Raleigh. Uh, they came in last year at 9-4, and four, and they peaked early in my opinion. They were a young team last year. And, and let's look at Southeast Raleigh. Coach Daniel Finn had been there before, left, went to South Brunswick. Now he's back. He had an incredible run at Southeast, and then they kind of took a lull. They, they, they kind of got off the radar a little bit. But it was one thing I've seen, and, and you grew up in Raleigh, you've played those teams. Southeast Raleigh is one of the most athletic teams they've got. And now you get Dan Finn, now in year two with a whole spring to work on things. I think it will be dangerous. Well, they're athletic, and that's the biggest thing for me. When you see Southeast Raleigh, Garner, both of those teams, they're always very athletic. They have big, skilled athletes, and they're always really good at the skilled position. So I think that's no different this season. Um, moving up the, the ladder, number 20, 71st High School in Fayetteville. I know a lot about these guys. I used to coach in Fayetteville. Uh, Duran McLaurin uh, leads a really good team. Remember, he was the head coach at E. Smith, really made them big time. Now he's moved over, uh, been at 71st now for about four or five years. Uh, tough, tough team. They like to throw the ball. They can run the ball. They do a lot of things offensively. I think he's probably one of the best offensive head coaches in the state. Uh, Fayetteville football is tough, though. I mean, it's never an easy run in Fayetteville. And now, by the way, they moved to the Sand Hills Athletic Conference, which used to be the Southeastern Conference. So not only do they have tough Fayetteville teams in the non-conference, they've got to go through Richmond, Scotland, Pinecrest, Lumber, or Pernell Sweat, you know, that's a tough, tough road. Yeah. I, I think they're one of those teams, once they get through that schedule, they're going to be happy they faced all those great teams because yes. they're going to be ready for the playoffs. Absolutely. Uh, moving up, number 19th, uh, number 19 from Wilmington, Harvard High School. Uh, Coach Underwood has really done a great job of building that team. They were 8-6 and six last year. They kind of got off to a very, very rough start, peaked, started getting really good in the playoffs, made a strong run. They bring a lot of those guys back. Now, this is another one of those kind of ground-pounding, bring-your-lunch-pail-to-work kind of teams. They don't have the most speed, but they just – they always are good up front. Great lines. They hit you hard. They play good hard nose football and ended up winning a lot of games. Yeah, and eight and six, so you see from last season, you know, it wasn't one of these teams that had 10, 11 wins. They, they had some difficulties in that schedule maneuvering there, but you're right. They're a team that's fundamentally sound and that's looking to really kind of catapult themselves into even a better year this yes, season. Yes, yes. Number 18, uh, they finished 10 and three last year. Pinecrest High School, another team in the Sand Hills Athletic Confer uh, Conference. And, and what can you say about Coach Chris Metzger and the job he's done at Pinecrest? Of course, we all remember about 11 years ago, they wanted to shut the program down. Soccer was bigger than football. In fact, I think they were talking about doing homecoming games in <laughs> soccer. Well, not anymore. This is an Adidas school now. They've got their own sponsorship. They've got some of the coolest uniforms. They've got new helmets. They can play in a 10,000-seat stadium. Football is now the main course at Pinecrest. And, man, are they good. They still run They run that Carson Newman split-back veer. Uh, they're a very ground-oriented team, but they're fun to watch. You know, anytime you get gear, that means you're good. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you got, if you got the newest stuff, that means that you're doing something right in this program is really on the right track. Uh, moving up, number 17, Heritage High School, another team from your neck of the woods in Raleigh. Heritage are there in Wake Forest. Uh, been open now about seven, eight years, ten years. Um, Coach Dwayne Washington moves in. Of course, you know Dwayne Washington played in the NFL. Yeah, he, he's, been, he's been a big name in football for no a while since he stayed in the Steelers. I had a chance to talk to him yesterday, and he's very low-key but very confident. Yeah. And sometimes that's a scary, scary thing <laughs> because he knows what he's got. Uh, great quarterback. Got some, got some receivers they need to, to, to fill in. But they might have about the second or third or maybe the second best, third best. You never know. One of the top running backs in his yeah. senior class in Ricky, a person, uh, real, real good team. And, and they're going to be someone to look out for. Well, he, he's going to NC State and yeah. a quarterback. He's going to do Gunnar Holmberg. Holmberg and, and yeah. They've got other college prospects on their team. So this is a team that's well coached, but they have the talent to back it up too. Yes. So they're a team, I'm just looking at the rankings, they're a team that I'm expecting to have a huge season. No question. Um, moving up, that was number 17. Uh, now 16, Harding High School. This is an interesting one, and this is going to be a little bit of conversation. Harding went 5-7 and seven last year. Uh, but they, uh, Coach Sam Griner, they're one of the toughest teams last year. The schedule didn't really, really show how good the yeah. team was. 
a lot of good uh, stories behind them. Uh, got a quarterback. He's going to be a senior, Brahim Murphy. Uh, he passed for 847 yards, and and that he he's going to be good. I think he's much much improved. I can't wait to see that young man. But Quaveras uh, Crouch, he had 1,224 yards last year as a sophomore. He is rated now as the number one running back in the junior class, the class of 2019 in the entire nation. Yeah. Not North Carolina. I mean, he is one of those big-time guys. He's already got over 20 offers from Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, UNC, Texas, Texas A&M, some big-time schools. Hardy also, you know, he just got a lot going on. They're a team to look out well, for. Uh, they're a team. You look at the ranking, they're 5-7. and seven. But there's a reason why they're on the rankings because yes. they've got star players. So moving up, number 15, Greensboro Page, 14 and 2. You say, how can Greensboro Page be number 15? Well, one, that shows you just how tough high school football is. New coach, Coach Kevin Gillespie, he's gone now to Ashboro High School. Uh, now Jared Roffus, who was at Northwest Guilford, he's now at Page. Uh, yes, they were 14 and 2. Yes, they got beat in the state championship game last year by Wake Forest. Uh, so, but there's a lot of question marks. Uh, they do bring some really good players, though, especially on defense. I think Paige is going to be good. And it, would it surprise me if they snuck up in the top ten, maybe even the top seven by the end of the season? Absolutely not. Good programs find a way to sustain. You know, and they lose Will Jones, Javon Lee from last season's team. But whenever you, again, get to that state championship game, they didn't find a way to win it. You go into the offseason with extra motivation, and they have a lot of talent on their team that's coming back, though, and those guys have that taste in their mouth, and they want to have a successful season. With the new coach coming in, it's all about adapting to the new style. Yep. Uh, moving up, number 14, Laney High School in Wilmington. You know, that's the home of Michael Jordan, by the way. Uh, Laney, last season, came in at 8-5. and five. Uh, Coach Yeoman has done Yeoman's work in, in getting that program <laughs> together. And, and, and let's look at something. That's a team early in the year that did not really impress a lot of people. They had a lot of very low-scoring games, didn't didn't really look the part. Fast forward to the semifinals, the four double eight Eastern Finals against Wake Forest, and Wake Wait. Forest, the state champions, yeah. struggled to beat them seven to six. I think that gives you just a little bit of what uh, Laney has. They were a young team, brought a lot of those guys back. During the 7-on-7 seven seven circuit, all the coaches are saying, hey, guys, this is one of the most athletic teams we've seen. I think they're going to be really good. Well, I think they're a team that has great coaching. And when you're playing your best football at the end of the season, going against Wake Forest, we saw how good Wake Forest was. And they yes. almost were able to win that game in the playoffs. So I think that says it all right there. Just, yes. again, how do you develop through the offseason, pick up where you left off from last season? Yes. Uh, moving up, number 13, Huff High School out of Mecklenburg County. A uh, little bit of a... Well, not a little bit, a lot of a shakeup here in the offseason. Uh, coaching changes. Now got a new head coach in Matt Jenkins. He had been a head coach before at Hopewell. Before that, had been in Las Vegas. He was a defensive coordinator at Concord High School. Jenkins comes in, and Huff got a lot of uh, – they acquired some talent through some transfers uh, with the program uh, with David today. Uh, they were 7-5 and five last year, but they were a very good team. And, and that IMAC canal, it was the MECO last year – the IMEC conference with Vance, West Charlotte, North Meg, Mallard Creek, Huff. Last year was Kannapolis. You know, that that was one of the, the if not the toughest 4A conferences in the state. So to come out of there 8-5 and five, or 7-5, and five, pretty good team. Well, they're a team that's always been solid. Yes. And they don't beat themselves. They're very disciplined, and they run the ball at a high level. So I wouldn't expect those things to change. Yep. All right, getting up closer to the top, number 12, Middle Creek, over there in your neck of the woods in Apex. Coach Randy Ragland, one of the best in the business. You want to talk about an offensive coach that can throw the ball, air raid, just spin the ball, get it to receivers. He, he has receivers all over yeah. the field. Uh, the, the one thing, and, and, and Chris Edwards, the only thing about Middle Creek that Chris Edwards won't give the seal of approval is the black numbers on the black jerseys. <laughs> But uh, they're a good football team, 14-1. and one. Coach Ragland said, you know, they graduated most of those yeah. guys, but they bring enough back. He still is confident they're going to be very, very good, maybe not as deep. Will Young, Young's not bad. Young gets, you know, yeah. you develop fast through the season, especially at the varsity level. But Middle Creek's a good team. Well, offensively, they're outstanding. I think for them, once they get deep in the playoffs, how much does that defense improve? Because that was the one thing that – 
really showed when they played against Wake Forest. Wake Forest had the defense and Mill Creek couldn't stop them. So that's their one improvement area that can yep. really help them get to yep. the next level. So really moving up now, we're talking big, big boy football. It, it just gets better and better as we move up the chain right now. These next two schools are very close in proximity. And by the way, they're, they're, they're fierce rivals. I have gone back and forth on these two. Uh, I flip-flopped them about 100 times in my preparation because I think they're just both so solid and so good. And now they're conference foes. Number 11, East Forsyth High School, Coach Todd Willard, 12-2. and two. Uh, I know we remember two years ago, they were an overtime uh, stop away from going to the state championship game. They nearly beat Mallet Creek. The program that Todd Willard has built is amazing. Uh, they're they're going to be good. Uh, how good? Yet to be determined. They've got a lot of young pieces that they've got to fit in, and and, and, and you know they've just got to get better. But East Forsyth is a heck of a program. I've seen them uh, a couple times the past couple of seasons, and, and really them and Mallard Creek physically are the two biggest teams in the state. When you're down on the field level and see them, they look like they're college athletes. I mean, they're impressive yes. and very talented. And this year is going to be no different. I'm looking for them to yep. have a big season, but interesting. West and East Forsyth like straddling there. Yep. I'm sure that'll change throughout the season, going back and forth because yep. both teams are, are going to be great. And that's going to segue right into number ten, West Forsyth High School. Coach Adrian Snow, and he's probably going to be mad at me for putting them up uh, this high. He's one of these guys that likes to lay in the weeds. He'd have been <laughs> happy to be ranked 26, <laughs> but. I'm sorry, Coach Snow, you're going to be in the top ten, and you deserve it. Even as we speak right now here, Friday, uh, it, West Forsyth, they're up at Canton, Ohio. They were invited to USA Football, an All-American 7-on-7 uh, seven -seven tournament. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're a good football team. You don't get invited to those big-time deals. For, it, well, you're not a good team. It's a great experience just overall being up there and seeing that facility and playing those teams, but also a chance to get better, and they have one of the best in the country. Yeah, and we're going to break down conferences and teams and players a little bit more, but you, you, you can't not mention the number one DM in the country, KJ Henry. I mean, he's recruited by everybody. I mean, I, I think teams in Canada even want him. <laughs> he, he, I don't think you, you can't go from high school to the NFL, but he's going to be an NFL in a couple of years with his body. Matures. You can just tell it. He's six foot six, long, lean, and athletic, uh, prototypical defensive end, and, and somebody that you're going to hear his name for numerous years. No question. Uh, moving on, and now we're really getting into some of the nitty gritty. Number nine, Myers Park. Coach Scott Chadwick's team, eleven and two last year. He's, this is, I think, is going to be his third or fourth year at Myers Park. He has really kind of built them in, and, and I know last year, and, and, and everybody doesn't say it, hey, your memory of last year was that 53 to nothing whipping they took to Butler. But I think Myers Park is a year younger. They were a sophomore heavy team last year, a year older, a year wiser, and they've got some great, great players coming up. Uh, can they replace Jack Davidson? I know he was a great quarterback last year, Eagle Scout, 4.6 GPA. Best quarterback you'll ever see in terms of just being a good kid. But now they're going to bring in um, Hawkins, uh, Braden Hawkins. He's 6'3", 220. He looks like Brett Favre. He played as a quarterback at Dillon, South Carolina, won the state championship at Dillon last year, uh, 2,700 yards, 31 TDs to five interceptions as a junior last year. Mm -hmm. Now he's at Myers Park. He throws some rockets, and, and let's talk about this. Elijah Bol uh, Bolwick, 6'2", 220, junior receiver. He's recruited by everybody, and, and I think we've heard of this guy. He's a sophomore. Musin Muhammad, his son Moose Muhammad is yeah. a receiver. And, oh, by the way, Dre Bly, the plate at Carolina, his son's a corner on that team. So that's going to be one heck of a football team uh, at Myers Park. Uh, be fun to watch. Any thoughts on these guys? It's just the talent. I mean, you said it was a chance for quarterback coming in. If you have a quarterback, you have a chance. I think they're going to have a chance to have a great year, even go deeper in the playoffs. Yes. Uh, Sanderson High School. When's the last time Sanderson's been in the top ten of the 4A ever? I, you know, looking down at your list and your rankings, you're like, Sanderson's there? But, boy, do they have some studs on their team. <laughs> no question. They came in in the final rankings of 2016, number 25th. Uh, they were 9-4 and four last year. Ben Colstad, uh, you know, we talk about the best coaches in the state. Everybody wants to say Richard Bailey, Paul Hogger, guys like that. Ben Colstad came from Wisconsin, and he's quietly become – one of the best coaches, and the record yeah. shows it. He won big at Cary, and now he turned Sanderson into a giant. you, you got to sing his praises. And look at the kids they've got. Running back, Trent Penix, um, 1,792 career rushing yards, 
19 touchdowns. They got a really good quarterback in Justin Dunn coming up. Sanderson's for real. Yeah, they're, they're for real. They've got the talent, but also with that coaching staff and the stability there. This is a program, you know, not a lot of success in their past, but now, boy, they really put their name on the map. And with those star players, they're seniors now. They have a chance to have a big year at Wake County. And guess what? Week one, Sanderson is going to play on a Saturday, the first week of the season, at Cardinal Gibbons High School. They got some stadium stuff going on against East Forsyth. Talk about a big time matchup on a yeah. Saturday. I'm there. Yeah, and that's whenever you play a big game like that, that gets the players' attention during preseason practice, offseason conditioning, because you know, hey, listen, game one, we gotta we gotta bring our A game because we're playing a great team. Yep. Uh Richmond County last year, they were nine and four, number seven. Got a brand new coach in Brian Teal. Richmond's fast, fast, and faster. I mean, they're just one of the fastest teams I've seen. They got a great running back in Dante Miller. He was electric at the Shrine Bowl invite combine a couple days ago. Uh, they, they're very small up front, but Richmond, you, you've heard of that Raider magic, yeah. haven't you? Tradition. I mean, yes. I mean, when you think of about a team in North Carolina, they're one of the top ones you think about. But the success they've had, and tradition never graduates. Yep. There. So yep. They're always in the thick of things. Number six is a team that will play Richmond early in the season. Butler High School won a few state championship games. Brian Hales graduated just about everybody that was uh, quarterback, a lot of players. Uh, Butler was 12-2 and two last year, but they've got one heck of a running game. Uh, they're going to be really good. Again, they're in that tough conference, but they're the reason it is tough. Coach Brian Hales, I don't care what you say. Uh, Christian LeMay graduated. People were gloom and doom. Guess what? Riley Ferguson showed up. Uh, you know, I, I just remember every year people think they don't have a quarterback. They don't have a quarterback now, but – Brian Hales makes quarterbacks. Yeah. They will be fine. They're fundamentally sound. I saw them last year, and I was just impressed. Boy, they had some talent, but they did not have any penalties. They executed their calls, and defensively, they're very strong and fast, and I think that's why they're always in the thick of things. Another team that is really fast, uh, number five in the rankings, they have had an incredible summer at night, seven on seven tournaments. One of the most physical, best-looking teams I've seen, and that is West Mecklenburg. Coach Jarvis Davis has really brought this program. They're loaded, though, but can they replace their leader and their quarterback from last year, Richard Latimer? Uh, they've got some of the best kids I've seen, some really, really top-tier recruited kids, uh, some kids that are committed to Carolina already, uh, Tyler Barnes, uh, Diami Brown, uh, Jared Jones, I mean, some really good-looking kids at West Mecklenburg. They're going to be somebody to watch. Yeah, and once you get into that top five, these teams are all stout. They have great defenses, but star players. It's really, I think, the biggest difference is the quarterback play yes. and turnovers. But West Mech, boy, they've got those yes. all throughout the roster. Yes. Uh, number four, Aaron Brand's team, Vance, 13-2 last year. Uh, lost to Page in the fourth round of the playoffs. They've been knocking on that door for a while. Aaron Brand is like the quarterback whisperer. He can do it all. <laughs> he he develops quarterbacks. You, you remember back in the days with uh, Coach Tommy Knotts at Independence. He, he's been a head coach at West Charlotte. Uh, Aaron Brand, he did it done. Of course, he's at Mallard Creek as well. Uh, speaking of Mallard Creek, number three, Mallard Creek. Uh, not too long ago, they were three-peating it. Yeah. Now, you know, they struggled last year. And, you know, I remember being on TV at the Time Warner studio saying, you know, they were the most talented team in North Carolina, but – you know, Dudley got it done. Wake Forest got it done. It, it was weird to talk about not Mallet Creek not being the best team, but I think they've got a chance to, to redeem themselves and, and start a new streak. Uh, coached by Mike Palmieri, they got two. Uh, they got some great players coming back. Um, Knowledge Gainey's one of the best receivers I've seen. Uh, Kalen Allen, Cam Lowry, those are three-year starters. Uh, they got this kid named Lavelle Williams in from Louisiana who is electric, and I, and I watch him. He's got, like, cat-like reflexes yeah. with his hands going after balls. It's incredible. He's going to be a good kick return. Jaden Washington's going to be coming up as their quarterback. You know, they've not really seen him. He got some mop-up duty last year. But Mallet Creek, their defensive front, their front seven is nasty. Mm -hmm. And they've got one of the best offensive lines coming back. Um, I know people kind of get tired of hearing them out Creek because they won all the time, but I think they're going to be back. Well, and I think, Chris, they're in a different spot here. Usually they're number one, but now they're going out and hunting after other teams. They're kind of laying back here a little bit, but the talent they have on their roster, every year they restock. And these guys, I mean, they truly look like a college team out yes. on the field. It's all about quarterback play with them because you know that defense is going to be outstanding. They're going to have great skill yes. players on the outside, but I think they have a lot of motivation coming to the 
this season as yep. well. Uh, the number two team, who, by the way, is going to be the kickoff to the season, playing Mallard Creek on a Thursday night. Scotland County, uh, can't mention Scotland County without the nation's best running back in Zamir White, who committed to Georgia. He's got 5,083 career rushing yards, 85 touchdowns. He is amazing. But junior running back Zaheem McQueen had 1,300 yards last year as a sophomore, 23 touchdowns. I think he's just about as good as yeah. Zamir. They're nasty. Yeah, and that's the great one-two punch they have because everybody's going to try to stop White. But when you have McQueen there, the the kind of dual uh, tandem in the backfield, it takes so much pressure off White. And also, too, you can't focus on one guy, so they can do a lot of different things with formations and help helping out White because he's a stud. He's going to have an outstanding career, but this is – kind of his cap his final year in high school, and I expect him to really break out even bigger than he already has. Yes. Um, and that leaves number one, uh, Wake Forest, returning champion 16-0 last year. They are far and away the most physical, athletic-looking team I've seen this summer. They, they've just been – you know, they run a version of the wing tee, yeah. which is not known as a passing offense, but they've been dominating teams in the 7-on-7 seven seven circuit. And we're talking about good teams, power rate 7-on-7 seven seven and some of those guys – uh, Devon, Devin Lawrence, 1,700 yards rushing last year, uh, all-purpose. Uh, Marquise Dunn, 1,400 yards all-purpose. Uh, Jamarcus Jones, 600 yards all-purpose. Quarterback Chris James, about 1,200 yards uh, passing last year. Uh, and you can't talk about Wake Forest without talking about that defense. I mean, yeah. Last year might have been the best high school football defense at the 4 AA I've seen. I mean, you talk about Hodge and Gill and some of those guys. They were straight up this nasty. Nasty. Yeah, and they have the skill on offense, and Lawrence, he's been a star since his freshman season. But the reason they won the state championship is because of that defense, how big they are, physical they are, fundamentally sound in all three levels, defensive line, linebackers, and secondary. Yes. They have great players, but they're well coached, yep. and, and defense wins championships. And, and, you know, speaking of Wake Forest, for years, I, I will be the first to admit that I was not always a huge supporter of Raleigh football. Because it do well, you know. Wake Forest went to three, four state championships, like almost in a row, and just got blasted by Charlotte teams, Butler, uh, Mallet Creek. But you started seeing Reggie Lucas's teams get just a little bit better, uh, and you can get a little bit better, a little bit better. And now I think the Charlotte teams are chasing them. You know, this this is a team that has gradually built themselves and just gotten bigger and stronger. And I think they saw what the Charlotte teams and where they were beating them up front and with physicality and strength. And they've made that their strength. Well, and they have. And that defense, the offensive line they have is great. But that defense, you know, defense can travel. And when you have a great defense, it's going to keep you in the ball game. Yes. And that defensive line with Dexter Lawrence they've had in the past and just everybody they've had throughout the past couple of years, it's really been impressive to see the rise of their program. And also, too, you know, a big thing, winning the state championship last year really gave – teams in the Wake County area, the Raleigh area, confidence that, you know, we're playing great football here and we're playing against a great team in Wake Forest. And, you know, another thing, that whole area, Heritage is up there. They're yes. ranked here, top 25 Wake Forest. Wakefield is always good in Millbrook. So that North Raleigh area, Wake Forest area, is really building up and getting to another level. No question. Well, guys, we appreciate you joining us here on the CarolinaPreps.com TV network. Uh, Jason Hunter, Chris Hughes, I can't wait for the season to kick off, Jay. Uh, we're going to break down the rest of them, 3A, 2A, and 1A. But we appreciate you joining us, and we'll catch you next time.